Greetings. A few months ago, I did a video comparing these two pens, which were pens introduced in the mid-1960s by two out of the three major German pen manufacturers. So this is a Lamy 2000, which is still in production as we speak, been in production for over 50 years, and a Mont Blanc 220. Um, I compare these two pens with each other. They both compare very favorably to each other. They're both very similar. They were both introduced around the same time. Mont Blanc did discontinue this pen in the 70s, so you'd have to get this one from the vintage market. It does beg the question, what was the third major German pen manufacturer making that would sort of address this style pen in the market? And the answer is this pen. This pen is the Pelican. MK30. It is at first glance stylistically quite similar to these pens, but it is very, very different in a lot of ways. It is a much lower end pen in the market. It has a steel nib, not a gold nib. It is made out of a sort of ordinary, although quite well made plastic, as opposed to the composite Marcolon material that the other two pens are made out of. Um, and it definitely, you know, is, is meant to be a lower segment in the market pen. It also was discontinued many, many years ago. So if you want one of these, you have to get it in the used market. I kind of been looking for one of these for quite some time and I didn't really want to overpay for it to complete the set, so to speak. I just was able to pick this up uh, at a pen show recently. It's not an easy pen to find in the US. I don't believe to the best of my knowledge that this was ever actually retailed in the US during its, its period that it was on sale. So. It is a little tricky to find, especially if you're in the US. Not impossible though, um, and, and I didn't really want to pay a lot for it, so uh, there you go. So we'll, we'll do a normal review of this pen um, and uh, compare and contrast it a little to these guys, although like I said, it's, it's a very different segment of the market pen. Steel nib gold versus gold nib, um, obviously a very different price point, uh, meant to be in a very different market segment, etc. But again, as you can see, they are very, 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 very similar to each other, just first glance stylistically. So I thought it was worth uh, doing. Oh, and least not forget, if you want to get a pen like this and you really want to go cheap, go uh, look at a video I just made a few weeks ago where I can look at this pen, which is the Keiko Edge, which is an inexpensive Chinese pen that is made out of a Macalon or Macalon type material and is, um, uh, you can pick this up for 12 to $15. Uh, cartridge converter pen, all these others are pistons. Um, but um, if you like this sort of pen stylistically, it might be something to consider. Check my video out if you want more details on this pen. Okay, so now let's get to our MK30. Here it is compared size-wise to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So we could do our normal size comparison. So a very sort of standard sized pen. The weight on this pen, the Pelican MK30, is a fairly light 15 grams. It's mostly a plastic pen. The Lamy 2000 is quite a bit heavier at 25 grams, and the Mont Blanc uh, 220 is a bit lighter at 13 grams. So let's look at the parts of this pen. It is a piston filling pen. Uh, it, it's fairly sleek. It's sort of a glossy uh, pl plastic, although it is a fairly like robust and heavy uh, plastic. Um, you can see the seam where the piston turning knob is and uh, about two thirds down the barrel is where the piston turning knob is. Um, around the cap band it says Germany Pelican Rolled Gold. So this is rolled gold or uh, fin trim or what is very often referred to as gold filled. Um, the clip is actually quite a nice clip, um, not a what we call classic pelican bill shape. As you can compare and contrast the clips here, this is a modern pelican pen which has the clip which is really the full on pelican bill shape. This one, one would say is almost evocative of the general uh, type of shape of the clip, but you know, it, it's not really meant to be, you know, li a literal spot on Pelican Bill interpretation. It more sort of just evokes it, I guess, if you will. Um, the top of the cap has the Pelican logo. This is the mother Pelican feeding two chicks. This is an older pen. If you look at a modern pen, it's a more stylized version of the logo, and the mother Pelican is feeding only a single chick. There is sort of a plastic insert that actually covers 
the top of the logo. It is a slip cap pen. There are no little nubs to hold the cap on, much like um, the Mont Blanc 220 and the um, Lamy 2000 all have these little nubs to hold the cap on. This Pelican pen does not have that. It has this nice little uh, gold tone band here. And you probably can't tell because it's full of ink, but this entire piece right here is an ink window. It has by far the nicest ink window of the three pens. The, the one on the Mont Blanc goes all the way around the pen like this one does, but it's, it's about half the width. And the one on the Lamy 2000 is just sort of these little these little slits that are again pretty narrow. So this is definitely, of all the three pens, by far the most functional ink window that, um, that there is. And uh, it has a nice long, uh, somewhat tapered section. The nib is a semi-hooded nib. It reminds me quite a bit of the semi-hooded nib and the overall shape that the Mont Blanc has. It is, however, keep in mind, a steel nib. Um, and there's a fairly large hole on the bottom of the feed, which is where the ink uh, comes in. And like I said, it is a it is a bona fide piston filler, so that is that is quite nice. The pen obviously posts nicely, posts very deeply, and is quite comfortable. Nice light pen in the hand. You have this nice long section. You can hold it any which way you like, and is a very very comfortable pen to use and write with. So. That is about all the parts of the pen. But, but, most importantly, pens were meant to write. So let's see how this writes right now. Okay, folks, what we're writing with here is a Pelican. MK30. And, um... This is a steel nib, and I'm going to say it's somewhere in the fine to medium range. It is unlabeled, but um, but um, that's probably what it is. It, again, Pelicans tend to run a little bit on the broad side, so they may have sold this as a fine at the time. Hard to tell exactly, but it writes pretty well. It's decently wet. It is pretty smooth, and it has some nice, nice flow, um, and it really writes well. I mean, steel nib, you know, um, not bad, not bad at all. I have no complaints at all. Again, it's a semi-hooded nib, so you really are not going to get much at all in the way of line variation. You could squeeze a tiny bit out, but it is really not any sort of a flex nib by any means. Um, I'm actually quite pleased, though, with the flow and the wetness on this pen. I actually like it quite a bit. I just got it. I haven't had it that long. Like I said, I just picked it up from a pen show. I need to really use this somewhat more extensively, but so far I am liking what I see. Um, it seems to hold quite a bit of ink, which uh, looks like it's going to be necessary considering that this uh, writes pretty wet and has some, some uh, like I said, good flow to it. So, um, pretty nice pen. I have to say, I like it and I think it's, uh, I'm happy that I'm able to sort of, like, like I said, uh, sort of complete the set with the uh, Mont Blanc 220, this, and the um, uh, Lamy 2000. Uh, I presented the Mont Blanc 220 as a good alternative for someone who's in the market for a pen of this style and was thinking about buying the Lamy 2000. The Mont Blanc 220 is a fairly easy pen to find on the used market and sells for about the same price of vintage that a new Lamy 2000 sells for. This pen sells for quite a bit less. This is about, you know, you, you shouldn't, I paid, I think, $60 for this pen at the pen show. Um, I'm not sure you, I'd want to pay too much more than that. It's a steel nibbed pen, etc. But this one writes nicely, has a well working piston mechanism, and I'm quite, uh, quite pleased and quite happy with it. So if you can find one of these that's working and you like this pen, it's probably a good one to pick up because they, they're not that common, at least from what I can tell here in the U.S. Perhaps if you're in Europe, they, they, they may be, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see them a lot, a lot more. So, 
Um, we can talk about this ink, but I went into the same ink in detail when I talked about the Lamy 2000 and the Montpong 220. So if you want to know more about Waterman Serenity Blue, I would refer you to that video, but it's a nice, safe, general purpose blue ink that I tend to use in things like vintage piston, piston filling pens, etc. It's the closest thing to a standard blue ink that Waterman sells, um, and uh, it uh, is a well-working, well-behaved, well-functioning ink, and I highly recommend it for things like vintage pens that uh, have pistons or sacks or things that are generally uh, maybe harder to clean or that you really want an ultra, ultra safe ink in. Um, but again, I would refer you to that other video where I go into this ink in quite a bit of detail. Okay, I think that will do it for this episode. What do we think? Yeah? Yeah, I agree. So, if you like this video, please, please subscribe. If you don't like the video, I would say subscribe anyway because you'll probably hit one that you like eventually. In any case, um, drop me a note and let me what you like it, know what you like about it, what you don't like about it, or just to chat. In any case, have a good day. Bye-bye.